Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out here on the launch pad today with the uh, Space Shuttle Restless in its uh, new and improved configuration. This is mission STS-2, classified. We'll get to that later. But uh, you'll notice that I have swapped out the 10 M55 Minutemen solid rocket motors for two liquid fuel tanks powered by uh, three apiece, six total E1 uh, Carolox engines. And uh, this has given some pretty significant gains to the capabilities of this shuttle, none of which will help with stability on re-entry, but I think I've taken measures to address that also, but obviously we will get to that later. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get this thing throttled up. All right, uh, just to double check on my staging, make sure everything's in its correct order. And three, two, one, ignition. All right, ignition is good. Let's get them clamps off and get going. So we are just taking a nonchalant trip to orbit with a uh, top secret government payload today. This is one of our first, not actually a contract, but I needed some random excuse to fly this payload to orbit. And testing this new configuration of our SDS uh, seemed like a good enough reason. Um, build time on this thing, since we recovered the orbiter, was something like 25 days, which is absolutely insane, considering the two orbit capabilities of the spacecraft, and, I mean, if it's reuse cost after reusability is about, you know, uh, let's see, the first mission costs uh, a little over 90, this one also costs a little over 90, but most of that's because of the payload, and we get, like, almost 60 of that back when we return the orbiter and then we get a huge knockoff of our build time like the initial build time for this was something like 265 days this one was built in less than 30 I'd say that's a substantial improvement all things considered but anyway we're gonna go ahead and get this bad boy into orbit and I will pick all of you up there Oh, well, we didn't even get to use up all of our uh, liquid hydrogen. We were at a uh, 198 by 151, which is uh, a pretty good orbit. Although, unfortunately, that does mean that our uh, external tank will not deorbit. Good. We've got uh, plenty to run the fuel cells. Uh, actually, let's if we can get this thing pointed. I am trying to nose down, but I don't see any of my aft thrusters firing. Okay, well, all right. Um, I guess we'll just roll it all the way over. I don't know why these thrusters are, oh, because I guess my center of mass is still ahead of those ports, interestingly. All right. So we're going to try to fire the tank in such a way that maybe it will deorbit. This periapsis is not that high, and we're certainly going to uh, improve it after we've jettisoned it. But we need to be facing the correct direction to do that. That's awesome. We, uh, we totally hit orbit without uh, depleting all of our liquid hydrogen. I mean, we don't have a whole lot left. There's some here in the orbiter. Oh, lots here in the orbiter, actually. I wonder if I should drain some of this to save weight. Because we certainly don't need it. Alright, well. Yeah, we're gonna... That's what we're gonna do. This is going to exacerbate our role greatly. Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to take a couple of trips around. No big deal. Huh. 
that tank drained, but this one did not. I guess that explains some of our instability issues. That tank, that tank, that tank. We've got some left in here. Wow, that liquid oxygen went really quick. I'm going to keep some of it on board to run the fuel cells. Oops, stop. Nope. Now the ratio is 2 to 1 liquid hydrogen in favor, not 2 to 1 liquid oxygen in favor. Uh, and yep, yeah, there it's gone. Right? Do I have that correct? It's about 2 to 1 hydrogen to oxygen. I'm not entirely sure. We've got some to run our fuel cells, although we are quickly depleting our control, <laughs> our thrusters. Alright, and... EF2 ditch. Not sure if that's going to be enough. Nope. Periaps is still 151, so that's going to just loiter in orbit for quite a while. Alright, let's shut down these engines so we don't burn off that last little bit of fuel that we have. And then we can stage in our Arizina N204, our Asterisk engines, and let's go ahead and get ourselves circularized. I should have waited to ditch that tank, huh? No, I don't want to... Yeah, I guess uh, I, I never actually went and realigned those keyhole satellites to something useful. My mistake. Alright. 195. What are we looking at for that burn? 12 meters per second. Perfect. So those, uh, those liquid boosters, ran. they really, really helped. As far as not only the cost, but the deliverability of the system. And we have a much more control over uh, where our Apogee comes out. Uh, last time we were up at something like 700 kilometers. Which is not really all that good. Alright. Node is... Oh, you know what I really need to do? <laughs> Yes, you're going to get a glimpse of our top secret payload. There it is. Oh, man. Like, most of that hydrazine is gone. I forgot to lock those tanks before starting. Bummer. Well. What we can do, just while we're here, is turn on one of its antennas. And I guess we'll probably boot up one of our own just to make sure. All right, let's get around to this node and take care of some business. Alright, we're about two minutes out. We're going to go ahead and try to ullage these engines. Should not take that long to circularize this. Alright, well, that's good enough. 202 by 185. We don't have specific uh, requirements here for when the satellite has to go out, but we're going to wait until it gets around to the daytime side and get around to a deployment. So... Time Warp is, in fact, our friend. There we go. Whoa, slow it down there, buddy. All right. Uh, controls for it are booted. Uh, our crew today is uh, <laughs> Yegor as our mission command pilot and uh, John Oliver, story comedian and uh, mission specialist. So, all right. We're going to go ahead and undock our node and switch craft which has its RCS on but the tank is locked because I did that alright that's the button I'm looking for it is certainly offset but not a big deal alright and we'll go ahead and start extending our panels this is our super high-tech uh, listen anywhere satellite 
which was not put in a polar orbit because I didn't think the vehicle would do it. Apparently, I was wrong. So as far as this experimental version of the government's latest spy tools, we can confirm that we can in fact put this into a polar orbit based on the uh, performance of this shuttle this mission, and certainly in its new configuration with those liquid boosters. All right, and we are showing a charge to our batteries. Excellent. So we're going to get this oriented a little bit more to prograde before we deploy its capabilities here. Hey, get clear of the tail, please. I don't know how close we are. It looked a lot closer from the other angle. So, all right. We're going to bring it about. Whoa, get clear, get clear, get clear. Do not, do not, do not. Oh, I was, wow, off by lots. All right. <laughs> Deploy this dish. That's why it needed to be clear. <laughs> this thing will listen to your whispers in your living room from orbit. That thing is just ridiculous. <laughs> but it is also a scientific data. Collect radio data. 7.5 science. Just above Earth's northern hemisphere. Interesting transmit that home. What does require complete do? Okay. That's super interesting. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and take it around. We are going to hit the southern hemisphere, I'm assuming, based on our flight path. Where are we? Here. We will not cross into the southern hemisphere until we are above periapsis. Let's go ahead and time warp to that. Alright, and coming in over South Africa. Let's take another reading from this thing. Collect. No connection. Way to go. I guess we are... Yeah, not quite over the horizon and connected to... What is this? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. There we go. Connection established. Collect radio data. Southern Hemisphere. Another 7.5 science. Not bad, not bad. Apparently, this thing can only be run five times, which is interesting because it looks like it's uh, hemispheric. So there's, I guess there's high and low science for both hemispheres. I would still leave one just in case you really screwed it up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We're five and a half kilometers away from the restless. So let's go ahead and switch back over to that. And here they are. All right, and we have a metric ton of fuel on this thing. Like, every single fuel tank is absolutely full, and I think that's way too heavy to bring this thing down. So, uh, next episode, we'll probably be dumping fuel into space, and I'm going to try real hard to see if I can't bring this down on a runway. These two have uh, 40 days of life support, which doesn't do us any real uh, anything. Okay, yeah, that's our contract complete. I did have some contracts that I was trying to get done for this, although I we probably have to do stuff. Yeah, that's the... Uh, space station, service of Mars, Venus. Yeah, apparently that scanner's not working anymore. That's interesting. Explain subtle orbital. Cool. All we have to do to finish that is land. And uh, we'll move that. Okay. They need to stay in orbit for another day. And then we'll get that one too, which recoups about half of the cost of this launch in total. This will recoup the other half, and then we're profitable. Imagine that. All right, well, that's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you tomorrow. Until then, see you later.